Alright, ladies and gentlemen, originally I was not going to give you a walkthrough on this bow build. I was just going to show you the set. I've been working on a set of three bows. Now, those three bows are a light, a medium, and a heavier bow, basically was the plan. Now, I'm just going to let you look at this for a quick second here. do is I'll share with you briefly my plan for this <coughs> and what's going on and what I have setting up and what, what I'm doing. So here we have some elastic bands and some basic tools. Now here's my problem. On this is nothing but elastic bands. Okay, sorry about the back and forth. Underneath. So here's what I've done. I'll show you what I mean. So I've made this. It's just a basic wrap. I'm going to pause for a second. And actually, maybe I don't need to. I'll just pin this in place with my foot. And look at that. Okay, so this is just made to be a sleeve that's friction fit. And I've tested it. It does stay in place while I shoot. <coughs> it actually doesn't make contact with the string. Its only job is to cover all this messiness. Now, I can pull this all apart and redo this with paracord. But it takes away from the stretch effect that I get here. This also helps protect the string, I find. <coughs> My early strings were wearing through very quickly. You can see there, there's a little wear there. Um, and I noticed that... <coughs> uh, it looked like I was basically going to have to change my string every two weeks or so. But I noticed once I started cinching these down with elastics, it basically protects the string. It's like a string saver because it takes all the tension off of these knots. And instead of this wiggling back and forth all the time while you shoot, the pressure comes from here and it's on the elastics. I actually like this. I could redo this with paracord. I've done other ones with just paracord and they work fine. But in the end, uh, I ended up adding elastics to all of them because I like the effect it has. I like the way that it... Uh, locks things in. I like the way that it damps some of the vibration, but allows the vibration to transmit through as well. It's kind of a really nice combination. It worked very well. It also adds a few feet per second because there's the stretch effect here. Um, so it, in the end, in addition, it adds more weight. The rubber has good weight to it. And so I found a combination of the two is actually better and I can soak it. Well, this is no different and I can soak this, and that's actually the last part of this. And then I'm going to take some dabs of glue and glue the little bits down. This has a loose end in it and a knot, so I can tighten the end of it. Uh, and at the other end, the same thing. Unfortunately, I blew through a couple of my holes, but it ended up coming out all right, and it works. Uh, it's not pretty, but considering it'll be on the bow facing this way, it's a hell of a lot prettier than that. Wouldn't you agree? I think so. And it sticks with the very much kind of native look I wanted. Now, <coughs> within that, I wanted to say a couple of things. One, making your leather stripping is as easy as taking a scrap piece of leather and cutting it into strips. It's such easy stuff to work with. What I will say is a couple of tools are really handy here uh, for making holes and for widening them out and for stuffing the leather wrap through this has proved very handy. <coughs> also, um, you want to soak the leather before you start working with it because when you go to tie it, it will just break. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm going to put this piece back on and I'll show you what I have in mind for the handle uh, and then we'll get to it. Hold on just a second. All right, now for the handle on this one, I actually had some really nice white leather, and originally I'd wanted to do the whole thing in white, um, and it didn't work out that I actually had enough of it, but I also wanted to maintain the adjustability of this, which meant doing this as a multi-piece grip. So the main piece actually wraps all the way around, but its seam lies here. I made another piece to cover the seam. That is actually what's elastic down. The rest of this is actually glued in. And then this one is elastic down because it's not glued in yet either, but it works very well. Uh, it allows the rest itself to stay steady 
while the serving rotates around it. And that's nice because it allows my arrow rest to always be in the same spot, but change its elevation as per my needs. And the way this works is I'm only attaching the serving at the bottom. It's loose fit around the top, so it can just slide here, and it's attached down here. Um, and it works very well. The handle's really nicely indexed to my hand and grip, and it came out really beautifully. Um, I like the look of it. So I decided to finalize that, but this is part of my process. At each stage, I stretch the leather in long before I glue it. I will soak the leather, I will stretch it. So I basically have one more to make here. And then this handle and uh, leather work is done for this bow. And then I'm going to soak it all. Uh, I'm basically going to leave it to thoroughly dry. And then I'm going to soak it again and let it thoroughly dry. So it shrinks a little bit into shape. Then I'm going to glue everything into place. Uh, only these end caps aren't going to be glued on. They're going to just going to be exactly like you see here. I'm just going to make a sewing section uh, to connect everything, and, and that's about it. So what I will say here is I originally was going to do these little X's, and, you know, it's really a pain in the butt to make sure these are lined up and, and there's no twists in it or anything like that if you really want it to be neat. Um, but it is a really nice method, and what it does is it makes each X separate and locks it in underneath with knots, uh, and then each X is a separate piece, and it is much stronger. Uh, that's why I went that way down at the tips, but I realized as I progressed, there wasn't much need to follow that all the way through, but I wish I had now, because this is so much neater and nicer looking and more authentic looking than this. But... This did the job, used half the num amount of material, and is functional. I also wanted this end to be softer because I don't want the string being contacted. And if it is, I want it to be only lightly contacted as it draws. And that's perfect where it sits right now. So once it uh, is finished, it'll actually sit out a little bit. <coughs> this was just kind of take one uh, to see if I liked it and all that. But I have to say... It's not bad. I mean, it does give it a very nice kind of authentic look. Um, and at the same time, um, it is a lot of work. I mean, this to build this bow has taken me well over a week um, because the material has to be broken in before the handle can be locked in place. Uh, it's one of the reasons I show these to you the way I do in terms of the videos, it's so many steps, it'd be impossible for me to do one video and show it all to you without missing huge amounts of stuff and tips and tricks and all that stuff. This is one of them, believe it or not. So long before I cut anything, I'm going to do this. I'm going to elastic everything into place. And it's actually good to soak it at this point, although I haven't done that on this one. Um, and soak the whole thing and elastic it in place. And that's what I've done with all the others and let them rock in soaking wet. And I'm about to go soak this, and this, and this, and let it kind of gel. I'm also gonna put elastics on that one, even though it's done pretty much, just to hold it in position. Then I'm gonna tighten everything uh, in terms of its wrap, and then I'm gonna glue it in place and just add a few dabs of epoxy to hold everything in place, or glue gun glue, or CA glue, or whatever you're gonna use. Um, but I want to do it in such a way that I'm careful so that I can still just remove it and everything is just locked in place. Also, uh, with these end caps being removable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of bungee um, that'll basically uh, be unclippable from one of them and tie around the other one. And it'll make it so that I can use them uh, as a sling when it's unstrung. Mm, that's a possibility, but I don't really need to. What I could do is attach a sling to it and just use a, an old school kind of rope sling uh, on it. But it has a rope and these really don't need it. I mean, these are so light, guys. You just kind of carry it and you can sling it over your shoulder so easily or attach it to your pack or your quiver so easily because they're so light uh, that that's actually the route I'm going to go with mine. You'll see when you see my setup, it's all locked in. Uh, there's actually a video up on my tactical sling setup, so go check that out. Uh, and you'll see how my quiver and my bow and all that lock in and are hands-free. It's a really nice setup. Anyway, um, so once this is soaked and I have a few more elastics on it to really make it hold the shape I want, I'll leave it sit like that overnight. Uh, I might soak it again 
and then let it sit some more. But once I'm satisfied that it's locked into position as much as it's going to be, I'll pull the elastics off. I'll trim it to the perfect shape. I'll wrap it again. I'll put my holes in it. I'll put my leather stripping through. That part's easy. I'm not going to show it to you guys, mostly because it's really hard to film and do fidgety work like that. I, I've tried. It's almost impossible to give you guys a good camera angle on it where you can see. And with me trying to explain it while I'm doing it, it's just too distracting. My quality of work on this stuff is a little weak because I'm new to it. Um, I've never done the leather wrapping before and all that stuff. I've always kind of wanted to. Uh, traditionally, mine were made with sinew and stuff, and that is actually a lot easier to work with, but it's very similar. And I have done stuff like this in the past. It's just that it was a bush bow. I didn't care how it looked. Well, this isn't much different, but I, I do actually care, and partly because I want to make uh, a couple of bows for my roommates, as I've mentioned. I want their bows to be nicer than mine. Well, partly that means I got to practice. So I figure I got three bros to practice my technique with, and then on the fourth bow and fifth bow, I'll be making theirs. Uh, so I've made six, <laughs> seven and counting, counting the dual bow, uh, just to give myself the extra practice. And because I've had lots of materials, heck, they keep bringing me materials. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm, I'm dedicated to making them each one. Anyway, that being said, this is almost done. I'm really excited about the way it's turned out as well. It's, it's really nice poundage. Uh, if you haven't seen the video on that, go watch that. I test everything with actual weights. Uh, I use my dive weights to do it. So uh, I got to get back to work here. I love you guys, man. Be safe and uh, produce, man. Produce good fruit, man. It's right in scripture. So uh, I try to do that. I try to produce good things and uh, share those things with everybody else. And that's kind of what you do. It also says we should pass on wisdom. And I happen to have a, a lot of knowledge in this area, uh, even though my leather work isn't the best. You don't need to be an expert on leather work to do this. It's one of the reasons I do my channel. This is a nice little complex bit of leather work. When you see the finished product, it's actually quite nice. Uh, this will appear to be very similar. And when you pull the cap off, you realize it's really quite easy DIY. And it's really nothing too fancy. But from a distance, it'll look great. I can have it out with me and hunt with it. It'll look great. It'll function great. That's really all that matters is the function to me. Um, I'm going to leave it the orange and that's, to be honest, one of the reasons I ended up going with the brown, the orange contrasts pretty hard with the white, but it, it really does kind of match the brown. This is that kind of orange, orangish, brownish kind of leather, and it really matched very well. So I thought, well, instead of wrapping this and changing it, why not just use a leather that worked with it? I got lucky and found a whole bunch of brown leather. Uh, so I ended up with a bunch more material than I expected and went to work. That being said, uh, I'm not done yet, man. It's been a long night. It's in the wee hours of the morning. I wasn't kidding. And I didn't just wake up. I just haven't gone to sleep yet, guys. Um, and this has been a running theme for me. I end up uh, up late doing my work. But at the same time, uh, when I'm done, it is worth it. And uh, the bow itself has turned out very well. I'm done tuning it up and adjusting it and tweaking it and all that good stuff. Uh, I just wanted to cover one last time uh, some of the tools. Now, when I put my string and make the section that the string slots into, I like to use these. This is Diamond Carbide uh, Rod. And it, I've had this for years and used it so much. It's really smooth and really worn in. It's not as good for sharpening anymore, but it's really great for this kind of stuff. Uh, and it does a really good job of being a good round file to smooth sections and make a really neat job of it. Uh, so I use that for that. Um, these guys I use for making my holes in the leather and for opening them up some. And then for opening them the rest of the way, I actually use this. And I also use it to push leather strips through the little holes that you make. And that's really important. You're going to need tools like that, guys. Uh, to do leather working and to do it nicely but at the end of the day it's not that hard and it mostly just takes practice um, I'll get better at it and they'll get neater over time and by the time I get to my roommates I still have two more to do of making these end caps uh, and once I've done the end caps for all three of them they're done and I mean these ones you might think that they're finished I've basically tested the poundage I've written the numbers on them all that stuff and you might think they're done, but in the end, I don't like the aesthetics. Okay, I like the handle. 
but I don't want bungee cord hanging off it to hold weights in place. I don't want all that on the tips. I want a nice, fairly neat, fairly finished look to it. And in the end, I much, much prefer that. A finished look that doesn't suck and shows, okay, it's DIY, but it also shows I took my time and made it out of leather. That this is a nice job. It's fully functional. You know, this will be the same. And so in the end, I'd way rather sport that um, than nothing. <laughs> and if I can afford to buy a nice bow, I've got my eyes on one on Facebook. It's right at the edge of what I can afford. I'll be broke, broke, broke to buy it. But I want to do it uh, partly so I can compare similar poundage bows uh, of the DIY variety as good as I can make them compared to a, a good factory bow. And uh, that's the plan. So that's coming too. like, share and subscribe, guys, because in the end, I'm making some sweet bows and I show you absolutely every step of the way exactly what to do and how to do it uh, and go into great detail about what you need and how to go about it and string silencers and what to make them out of and where to put them and all that stuff gets covered. Uh, and the idea is to take you from, hey, I got this rod to, hey, I got a bow, man. And that does take some time. Because the material needs to be broken in. If it's not, the bows won't bend equally and you might not have this in the right place once everything breaks in. So it's all time. And this is locked in and epoxied now. Everything's settled. I took a full week with this bow, just breaking it in and getting it together before I even permanently installed the handle, guys. Uh, and, and that's to break in the string and waxing it and stretching it and heat treating it and doing the same with this and uh getting the leather in shape and all that stuff and if you look it's perfectly perfectly formed man but this takes time and to get it that way before you glue everything is so valuable guys it's such an important thing don't just take leather slap it around and try and glue it it'll come out looking like crap every time the key is soaking it and working it with your hands and shooting it over and over and over again getting the leather broken in basically worked in before you glue it helps a lot it also means that everything's already stretched it's locked in place where it's going to be and the once it's glued there won't be any movement of the leather and that's really important especially if you're using something like glue gun glue or weak epoxy because as you bow it and the leather moves it'll break in as it's doing that it'll stretch it'll shrink in places and and both and when you have glued it it'll break apart the glue in those places and you'll find that can really wreck your wrap uh, and to avoid that, you have it all pre-stretched in and shaped properly. Uh, and this is a big part of this stage. This has been like this for two days now um, because it's really important. But now you can see it. I mean, the time it's spent like this, that 48 hours in this condition has made this all locked together so nice and snug. It's so nice now. When I glue it, it's perfect and it's properly indexed for me and all that and holding the exact shape. Now, what I've done here is I've taken a fishing rod handle, done a pairing cord wrap. So I've got one here just as a quick demonstrator to show you guys. So when you take a fishing rod handle, you'll notice that some of these have a bonum on them that spins separately and independently of this. I didn't want that for this type of build. Uh, because I want it to be adjustable and you have to make it so this stays still while this spins. Well, this was already built into this mechanism. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it because uh, it's too complicated to build yourself. But the general idea here is you have an arrow rest, okay? It's just upside down. So what I did was I cut it here where the threads are, unthreaded the whole thing, flipped it over, spun it back down and made this area my grip which means I have the indent in the handle that's where the reel is supposed to go. So I had to fill it anyway. So I did a paracord wrap underneath. Um, there is a spot right now where you can still see a little bit of it. Um, and so that is all wrapped underneath to give me the shape of my handle. And it, I actually did a really neat job. It came out very nicely. Um, and smooth and there's no knots and I actually did a really nice job in fact there's only one and it's where I wanted it for indexing um, so it worked out really well that being said uh, this bow is almost finished once this second end cap is made and this is all uh, soaked and stretched again 
<coughs> and left tomorrow will be when I finalize this, believe it or not. And I, I wish it could be all at once. I wish I could tell you that this was a two hour build, but it's not. In fact, just in the leather work alone and the prep work and getting all the leather pieces cut and shaped, that's days of work. Uh, but it's only because it takes days to stretch it all in. It actually only took me about an hour to make the pieces for this handle. Same goes for this. The, the stripping and the leather and the trimming and the tiling in, and that took about an hour. Punching all my holes and running it all took maybe another hour and a half. So in this one piece, you're looking right around two and a half hours. And the handle in total actual time to do it all, you should account for about that. And here you're looking at another couple hours. So in the end, you know, you're looking at 10, 12 hours of work just to do the leather work on this. Now, this is one of the reasons why I normally do with paracord because it's so much faster. When I was doing the bush, I just did them with paracord. It's so much easier or vine or whatever I could get. Um, but this is going to be much, much nicer than any of those. Much more stable, much more reliable. Um, so anyway, a fishing rod is a good base. In this case, if it were me, I would just cut this one off here. And here, put this one, use it as my arrow rest. It's nice and smooth. Cut it off here. There's your grip. I mean, there's a perfect handle. It's why I kept it. And it's got this nice end cap on it. You can just pull off. It's hollow already. Uh, and it's a metal case with a carbon fiber rod, fiberglass rod, fishing rod insert in it, which is great for strength. So, and it's great to help it fit the diameter of one of these. It's great. They just basically force fit. You might have to drill it out a little bit, but once they lock in, they lock in really tight. They work awesome. So there's all kinds of ways to make handles, guys. And I've made a lot of different handles a lot of different ways over the years. But this one's kind of a neat one because it's, again, the best of the old with the best of the new. It's got the paracord wrap over top of a fishing handle that is a modern design that has a nice adjustability here that allows me to use it as an arrow rest. In addition... I've got the leather wrapping, I've got epoxy, I've got modern materials here, but a native style uh, using kind of the best of both worlds. I really like that. The silencers, uh, all these little things are sweet. Now, again, these end caps, they aren't going to be permanently locked on at all, but this video is long enough, guys, and I, I did want to go into a couple more things in it, so I'm going to have to do another one on this. Uh, because I want to show it to you again when it's finished so you can see the finished product and see how it shoots. One of the reasons that this one's got me excited and I decided to do a, a full video workup on it is because it's come out really nice poundage, really accurate. In fact, of the three bows, I get the feeling this is the one most people are going to want to build. Most people don't want a really light bow or a heavy bow. They want something right in the middle. And this is your huckleberry. This one is exactly that. And I'm just going to show you real quick. I have written out the specs for this one. It's 65 pounds, guys, at its maximum draw. Uh, and it's really nice at whatever poundage is there. I even signed it. It's actually upside down there, but it's all good. Um, and it's not done yet, but the math was done, and it all checked out. So I wrote down the brace height. And I will do this on all of my bows so that you know what poundage this brace height was at. Nobody ever writes the brace height. Um, so basically, it's it's been pretty sweet. Now, this one at 28 inches is actually very low poundage. Uh, and at 32 inches is 58. Okay? Um, and at 33 and a half inches, which is its maximum draw it's right around 65 pounds, which is really sweet. And because of that, I figure this is the bow that most people are going to want. Unfortunately, I, I kind of was going to do my focus on the light bow and the meat and the heavier bow and just leave this one kind of out and show it to you at the end when it was done. Um, but I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that because now this one's covered and I really can't pull it all apart and show you, but it is a really simple setup. Uh, so I figure if I start now, I can show you the process and lay out everything because at the next step, this will all be hidden and it'll be really hard to show you how I did it and all that stuff and explain of the elastics method and all that stuff. And since I didn't technically show this part and how good it works, I mean, you look at how tightly it matches my wrap and you'll see it really is perfect. But keep in mind, the biggest piece of this is actually glued in. The only one that's not is this one here. 
this back piece and it's see this it's just covering the seams from this other one this one is actually rocked down already and i want to make sure this fits fits smoothly snugly and the more you press down on these seams the tighter this wrap is the better it's going to be guys and right now it, it i did it nice and it's coming out so perfect everything fits so snug and so so nice and that's really important guys and the reason it is, is because the way I hold the bow, this is going to be in the palm of my hand. And I want it to be as smooth as possible. It's also where my fingers grab. And I need it to be as smooth as locked in as possible. But right now, it is absolutely perfect, guys. It fits my grip so comfy. It's one of the things about a custom bow. You really can't have it your own way. Anyway, that being said, guys, uh, that's it for this one. It is almost finished. I'm really excited, and I'll show you the next video when I get to the next step. In fact, uh, with this one, that'll be when it's done. Now that you know the method, I really don't need to show you anything else. This one video is enough that you could build this bow on your own pretty much. Um, I've covered the material that's been used already, so I won't go too much into that, but you can see the thickness here. Uh, we're looking right around half inch here, but not quite. There's half inch. It's actually right around a third of an inch, uh, just a little over. And these are really great guys. They work amazing, really strong. They're not the fiberglass crap that just cracks and breaks. Good stuff. And I've noticed that they really hold their tension well. I can leave these bowed for weeks, and these don't get weaker. They're really, really good. And when they finally do, which they will eventually if you're bowing on them like crazy all the time and leaving them bowed all the time, then you just recurve it. Keith out.